Well, hey there. Hey there, hi there. I think I've waited long enough, so now I'm officially live. Uh, yes, this is Conrad Basum from Your Taxes Matter, uh, taking a break from filing tax returns to answer a question that we've been getting quite a bit lately. Uh, we put this out in our newsletter, and we try to keep you guys up to date as, as things continue to change. But you're receiving a bunch of information from us uh, this time of the year, uh, and that is because it is tax filing season. Uh, one of the things you may have received from us is not just a bill for our services, but uh, also a, a bill for the federal government or for the state that you live in. If you're in California, you, you may have gotten a 1040V or a 1040ES, and those are the letters we want to talk about today. We're talking about V for vouchers or ES for estimated uh, payments. Now, those those are two very different things that sometimes look like the same thing. Uh, so I wanted to spend a minute here to answer the question uh, before you ask it or if you've already asked it and you're waiting for a response, uh, here's the response. Uh, if you're looking at something and you're like, what is this bill for? I don't understand. What, what taxes am I paying? The first thing I want you to do is look for a tax year. Somewhere on the form, either the left or the right-hand corner, or I guess the right and the left-hand corner, it's a mirrored image, so I'm not sure what, what you're seeing. Uh, but uh, with that, uh, if, it's, if it's 2020, we're talking about the year that has already come and gone. Uh, this is last year, uh, opposed to if it says 2021, we're talking about taxes that will be due in the coming year. Uh, Taxes are easy, right? It's simple, right? Not that complicated. Uh, when we talk about taxes, we're normally uh, in a time frame of about three years. We're, we're working on the year that already happened. We're planning for the year that's uh, currently happening, and we'll be filing that in the, year, in the next year. So depending on the date on that voucher, that can normally answer your first question. Uh, the other thing that you'll see with it is, uh, like I mentioned before, a 540V or a 540ES. That's the California form. The federal form that you might be more more familiar with, especially if you don't live in California, uh, is the is the 1040. And the 1040 is the actual tax return that we file. Uh, the 1040V, V stands for voucher. It's for the taxes still owed. So when we get together to file, the filing season is right now for last year. It's currently the planning season for next year. Uh, and when we say next year, we mean 2021. So see what I'm saying? We're always jumping back and forth between the years. We're never quite sure what year it is. Uh, but, but with it, uh, if you got a 1040V, that means that your tax liability was more than what you had paid in, more than what you had withheld, more than what you got with credits and, and other things to, to get to the bottom line. So if it turns out that you owed money at the at the end of calculating all your numbers, crunching them, and, and working our magic, then you got a 1040V. And on that 1040V, it said 2020 for the tax year that the, the taxes are due for. So that is pretty self-explanatory. But the reason why I feel like this normally gets confused and why we want to take a minute to fully explain it is that we'll get that 1040V. And if you haven't paid in the past, I hear this all the time from clients, but I've never paid before. How do I pay this? What do I do? We can easily set up electronic withdrawal, which allows the IRS or the state agency to, to come in one time and take that money uh, for you. You don't, have to, you don't have to lift a finger, but not everybody's comfortable with giving Uncle Sam their uh, account information. So uh, if you've received this and you're surprised by it, I'm not surprised that then you don't know how the process would work. Uh, generally, you fill out a check uh, if you're going to go that way. On the voucher, there's also online instructions if you want to do this all online. Uh, totally, totally able to do that. But with it, a lot of the times people get the 1040V and automatically will also produce some 1040 ESs. And this is where the confusion comes in. That ES could be uh, a similar amount when all four quarters, Q1 through Q4, are added up could be a similar amount to what's on the 1040V. Because essentially what we're doing is we're saying, hey, you owed money at the end of the year. How about you pay these estimated taxes throughout the year, these four quarters, and by the time you finish the year, you'll have more than enough payment so you won't have to owe again. So a lot of times people will see those two numbers, they're kind of close, and they think, oh, perfect. This is the money I owe 
for 2020 that I'm going to pay in four easy installments in the course of 2021. Now I understand how that could that could seem like what's happening, but it's not because on those 1040 ESs, look for the tax year. It says 2021. Because you've been listening so intently and you're following everything that I'm saying, you've already pieced it together. That's not for the taxes due for 2020. That's for the taxes that will eventually be due, but we're going to charge you now because Uncle Sam wants the money now. Uh, you know, That's what will be due when we file those taxes. We don't have a crystal ball. Uh, we don't know how the rest of this year is going to go. Hopefully it goes better than the previous year, but who knows? We'll see. Uh, fingers crossed for, for all that could happen and has happened already. Uh, but with it, uh, you know, if if going through 2021 turns into, you know, the reason for estimated payments, we have these payments because we're guessing at what your tax liability is going to be for 2021. We don't know how it's going to end. We don't know if Godzilla is going to fight King Kong or if that's only going to stay in the movies. Um, but, you know, 2020 was, felt like kind of the year for that to happen. Uh, I didn't see that. Uh, I heard about murder hornets, never saw those. Um, but, you know, there's there's still this year. Things could happen. So so with that, you know, estimated payments uh, are set up uh, as as basically an estimated guess, you know, a hypothesis, a, a, a scientific guess or, or a educated guess. There we go. That's the phrase I'm looking for. So So we're guessing at what you could owe. Uh, but if you only pay those and you neglect a V, a 1040V or a, an 1120V or an 100, a 100V, there's many different ways to form many different different tax forms. But if you see a V anywhere on any document that we've given you and it says 2020, that is absolutely due by May 17th. The, you know, like I said, Godzilla hasn't come out of the ocean, which would be the only reason at this point that they're going to extend the season again. So May 17th is our hard deadline at this time, uh, you know, sans any world uh, disaster uh, or <laughs> cataclysmic event uh, could happen still. But uh, right now that is due May 17th. If you go through the course, you know, over the next year and just pay those estimated quarterlies, you'll be set for 2021 but you will have done nothing for your 2020 tax liability, which will now be a year older with penalties and interest. So whenever you receive anything for us, I guess this is the real point that I'm trying to make in, in my long eight minute ramble uh, of whenever you receive anything from us, whether it's a, a, a 1040V, a voucher or a 1040ES estimated payments or quarterly payments, uh, it helps to read. It helps to look at the document, find the tax year, see what it's for. Everything is outlined in there. And if and if you have a question, no problem. We're happy to help. But always first, I'd ask, look at what we've sent you, read what we've sent you, because it's just like the newsletters. I hear it all the time. Um, you know, I don't have time to read the newsletter and all this stuff. That's sometimes the only way that we're able to get some information to you. You know, this has been a crazy tax year followed by an even crazier tax year last year. So this is now a compound uh, problem that we probably haven't talked about for a year. Your life's completely different from the last time we spoke. So with it, you know, I ask that that's my big ask today is that just just read what we're sending out um, because we wouldn't tell you if it wasn't important. Uh, and the information is on the vouchers that you're receiving that you're asking questions about. So first, I'd always tell, I'd always ask, take a step back, look at what we've already sent you, read what we've sent you, and on there it probably answers your question. But if there's any confusion, we're always here, of course, to to help get us through it. But yeah, that's basically the long and short of the difference between a voucher and an estimated payment. Look for the year and look for the letter. Uh, those will tell you exactly what they're for. Uh, and when to pay them by. And again, if you have any questions, call us, email us. Email is probably better. Uh, you know, we can respond to that at uh, at 11 before we go to bed, uh, or five when we wake up. <laughs> so uh, it was it was a pleasure taking a break from taxes. I'm going to get back to it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our our first official Facebook Live. Hopefully, it worked this time. Uh, and we'll be doing a lot more of these to continue to to let you guys know we are alive. Uh, we do exist. And uh, if, if you do have a request or, or want to have us talk about something specific in a, in a shorter, less formal, uh, you know, appearance.
appearance program than a webinar? I don't know. I obviously need to get back to taxes. I've talked too much. Uh, so <laughs> uh, goodbye, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.